This is the Surface 604 Sunny Day. It's the smaller of the two cruisers that they offer. The other one is called the Big Sky, and it's like a high step. It's a 19 inch frame, whereas this one is 17 and a half inches as measured by that seat tube. I would call this a mid step. Some people would say, hey, it's step through, but it's not the full like wave deep step through. Still very approachable, kind of a neat classic styling on that like double top tube design here. It's going to be stiffer than most you know, full wave frames. And that's kind of nice, especially because it has these bigger tires and, you know, it is a cruiser sort of upright. And in some ways, it's almost like a city bike when you look at the reflective tires and the option to add a real rack right here. You can even add fenders. The one thing I did not see is a bottle cage mounting point. And I was looking for something on the frame. This bike's pretty affordable at $21.99. Surface 604 sells direct to consumer, so you could order this unbox it and and then just go and they give a year-long comprehensive warranty there's three years on the frame which is pretty good or you could get it at a shop which allows you to do test rides and stuff and kind of you know make sure it feels right rides in motion here in scottsdale arizona received and set these bikes up for me to do the review so i really appreciate it they had a bunch of different bikes to try definitely worth checking out and I would say I'm pretty impressed. I mean, coming back to sort of the price point, even though there's only one frame size and one colorway, you'll notice this like light gray, bluish color with some purple and gray accents. It, it carries all the way through to the rims, which is really rare and it looks really good, but that's the only frame color. I think it's a pretty safe color. It's fairly neutral and it's, it's bright. It's gonna stand out at night. I mentioned those reflective sidewalls before and they really get bright if there's a car coming from your side. And that's nice because there aren't any lights included, but it is pre-wired for lights. So you might see up here, there's this cable that's just sort of open. You could get the Bouchel Shiny 120, 120 lumen headlight and mount it right there. And it would just run right off that battery pack. And then if you get the optional rear rack, there's another light with two LEDs. And that one actually blinks when you pull the brake lever. So this is a very safe bike in a lot of ways. You've got motor inhibitors on both brakes. These are hydraulic disc brakes. And being hydraulic, they have these levers with some adjustable reach. There's like a set screw right there. So you could bring the levers in a little bit. If you're someone who's petite, this is the smaller of the two cruisers, again, from Surface 604. And then they've got these fairly large rotors. These are 180 millimeters. So they're Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, dual piston calipers, which is kind of standard, but that's gonna give you more cooling surface area and a mechanical advantage over these taller wheels. These are 27.5 by four inch wide. And that four inches, so it makes the wheel a little taller, which gives you a lower attack angle. It gives you more air volume for comfort, sort of like a cushion almost. And they've got a pretty decent PSI spread. Okay, so it's 30 to 65. And they're pretty inflated right now, which makes them very efficient, but it's, it's kind of harsh feeling. You'll notice there isn't a suspension fork. This is a rigid aluminum alloy fork. It works just fine. And especially with like an upright body position, you don't have as much weight leaning forward. So that suspension fork isn't gonna do as much for you. It would add weight. It would add some play to the ride experience. Coming back here to the saddle, we've got this Sully Royale Gypsy and it's got these big elastomer bumpers. So they're trying to give you this oversized comfort saddle. The seat post, it's a rigid 30.4 millimeters, and you could swap this out with a suspension seat post. And that, I would strongly consider that, or I'd be lowering the tire pressure just to give myself some more comfort. These handlebars sweep back, they're a little longer. They're gonna help to dampen some of the vibration, got ergonomic grips and stuff. But still, if you have back and neck sensitivity, suspension post is a good way to go. Keep in mind, it is going to raise your minimum saddle height by a few inches. You just aren't gonna be able to get the saddle quite as low. You might be able to mount the frame, then you're gonna have to step on that pedal to get yourself up on the seat. Just one of the little trade-offs. I love that they've got these large like quick release here for adjusting the saddle height. We've got quick release up front, 100 millimeter hub spacing, nine millimeter quick release skewer. It's easy to do maintenance on these or take that off if you're like putting it in the trunk of your car or something like that. I would definitely take the battery off as well. It's like six or seven pounds. And then the motor, this is connected to the bike with a 12 millimeter threaded slotted axle kind of see it over here if I take the rubber cap off and it does have a torque washer even though this has a stamp that says surface 604 
I, it's like a generic brand. It's not Bafang or something I'd really heard of. So I think they're saving some money on that. It still looks good, it performs well. It's a little bit noisier. You can hear it zipping when, when we do the ride tests, like it makes a little bit more noise, but it's still a 500 to 750 watt peak rated, which is really good. Maybe 45 to 65 Newton meters of torque. That's a hard one for me to test, but all things considered, it's working well. It's moving that big wheel. I'm getting the top speed. This is a class two electric bike, meaning it's got a trigger throttle and the top speed is 20 miles per hour, but it can actually be unlocked. So you can raise that top speed to like 26, 28 kind of class three performance, which is really neat. You just go in and there's like a password in the display. We'll get to that in a little bit. It's, it's pretty nicely set up. You'll notice the black spokes, extra thick back here. These are like 12 gauge and then 13 gauge up front, 138 millimeter hub spacing. So it's a little bit kind of a unique size to get this cassette. This is a nine speed Shimano Alivio, pretty decent derailleur. It's definitely not the lowest in the Shimano group set. And then the spread on this cassette, it's 11 to 36, which is wider than usual. A lot of times on cheaper e-bikes, you'll see like 14 to 28 or 11 to 32. So 11 to 36 and nine steps, it just gives you more choices for comfortable pedal cadence. And that's gonna make this bike perform well, whether you're at the 20 mile per hour limit or the 28 mile per hour limit. That This right here, I think they did a really good job. And you can see the shifter cable and the power cable and stuff's a little exposed, but that also makes it easier to work on if you need to replace a part or, you know, adjust the wheel or change a flat tire or something like that. I didn't see puncture protection rating on these, but I think Surface X04 did say something about like a Kevlar lining. Uh, hopefully they hold up pretty well. They look like a higher quality tire. They are Anova, which is a brand that I'd heard of before. And down here we have a 42 tooth chain ring, 170 millimeter crank arms, and these big aluminum alloy platform pedals from Welgo, like BMX style. So there's plenty of surface area. You're not gonna slide off, but they're not super sharp either. These are some of my favorite pedals. They got reflectors built in and everything. And then we've got a chain cover. And that's great if you're wearing pants or a dress or something, you don't want it to touch and get snagged on the dirty chain. This is steel. Everything else on the frame is like aluminum, except for like the chain ring. And steel is sturdy, it's quieter than plastic, but it's a little bit vulnerable if it gets scratched. It could start to rust and stuff. So keep an eye on this, maybe touch it up if you've got like a touch up pen or spray paint or something over time. Even nail polish, I think, can work pretty well. So that's a pretty good tour. Overall, I think, you know, the cockpit, it's a little bit busy with all these wires and stuff, but back to those quick disconnects and how modular this system is, I'm really impressed that there's a lot of little extras around the bike. The only trade-offs is kind of like a motor that's not as name brand, but still high rated. And then down here we have a tapered square uh, spindle instead of like the Samox hollow spindle that's a fancier, stiffer design on some of their other bikes that are like a little bit more mountain rated. They've got suspension forks and stuff. So this is, this is still the cheaper version. On the left side, we got a kickstand, adjustable length, and it's got plenty of space there with the left crank arm. So you're not gonna end up getting pedal locked by backing this out of your garage, that kind of thing. You will notice that the crank arm goes right past that battery charging port, okay? So it's a little bit vulnerable. Imagine it's plugged in and then someone kicks the pedals. It could just snag or even kind of, you know, maybe unplug or break the little uh, barrel plug. So I would be aware of that. It's also a little bit lower in terms of dust and water and stuff. I love that the key locking cylinder is up high on the left and on the right we have a USB charging port, one of two. So there's one right there and that can be used even if the battery is off the frame. And then we have that other USB port right up here with the display. So just kind of neat, a little bit, a little bit overkill, lots of extra utility from this bike. I'm gonna unlock the battery. It's a Ranch and Dorado pack. And then we pull it out like this. This is the stock battery, 48 volt, 12 amp hour. So over 500 watt hours, they sell an optional 14 amp hour pack and a 20 amp hour pack. So the 12 and the 14 packs, they look kind of like this. They're even on both sides, symmetrical, but the 20 amp hour, it sort of spills out on the left side a little bit. So it's, it's not quite as balanced. I think it looks a little ugly, but then again, it's gonna take you farther. And with that trigger throttle, if you just wanna coast along and go for a big ride, that battery might be the way to go. It's neat that they all use the same interface. And let's say you get this as like a, a couple or a family you would have like the sunny day and the big sky, you could swap the batteries between you or if someone's going on a long ride, they could take the extra battery with them. And I just think that's so cool. 
Another factor to consider with batteries is that, you know, it's Arizona, it's pretty hot here right now. If you're leaving this in your garage, it's getting really hot, that can be hard on those lithium ion cells. So ideally you would take that battery off and store it in a cool dry location when you're charging it or when it's not being used. So this is the charger. It's a two amp, weighs about pound and a half. I'd say it's pretty generic. You know, it kind of gets the job done. There's the plug interface, the barrel that I was talking about before. Got some nice branding here. Nothing to write home about, but they do have an optional four amp charger that you can buy. And that would be good to pair with those higher capacity batteries. So it just depends on, you know, what kind of accessories, whether it's the lights, the racks, fenders, chargers, upgraded batteries. As is, I think this is a very capable bike that's gonna get good range because it does use, again, a torque sensor instead of a cadence sensor. I moved us over into the shade for this next part so you can see the display. Really nice button pad, fairly reachable, but you do have to reach across that trigger throttle. So yeah, just something to, to be aware of. Press the power button for a couple seconds, lights up, color display, really nice. Comes to life pretty quickly. I love that there's a battery percentage readout, so it's much more precise than like the bars. Sometimes you'll see e-bikes with like four or five bars. This is just, it helps you to know like, oh, I better turn back and get going home or get the charger or just use a lower level of assist. And uh, again, just nice to see on a, a bike that's still fairly affordable. Speed in the middle, it's in kilometers per hour right now, but I'll show you how to change that. Trip distance, assist level odometer. Now, if we go down to zero, there's no assist, the throttle isn't gonna work, pedal assist isn't gonna work, it's just the display, but walk mode will work. So walk mode, if we press this minus key for a second, there we go, the bike will push itself. And weighing in at about 55 pounds, it's nice to have a little bit of help, especially if you have a rack, maybe you have a child seat or something, or you're just on terrain that feels unstable with a bike that it's not really an off-road bike, right? So you're cutting across the park. You can use walk mode to help you out. You could also use the trigger throttle, but that, that can give you full power. So in any of these five levels of assist, we can get full power with that trigger throttle. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like here. Pretty zippy. So you don't wanna get too carried away. We can change some of these readouts by pressing the I button. So trip and odometer change to max speed, average speed, time, and then back to odometer. And then there's a dedicated headlight button right here. But again, we don't have lights wired in, so it, it activates and there's probably electricity going here. And back here, it's pre-wired for a rear light, but since there's nothing attached, that's just sort of, it's not really used in this case. And now the settings menu. If we hold plus and minus simultaneously, we get in here, we've got display settings and advanced settings. So we can go in here and go from metric to imperial, that kind of thing. LCD luminance, so we can go higher or lower on the brightness, how quickly it turns off. We can change from percentage to voltage if we want to, kind of be precise on the, the, the charge level and a whole bunch of other stuff. There's password right here. And then we have the advanced settings where we can change the wheel size and the speed limit. And I think we need a password to do that. So I'm just gonna exit out here and we'll take a little ride. Now I found that assist level three is pretty comfortable. That's where we'll, we'll ride. But since this does use a torque sensor, I found that it's best to turn the bike on when you're not touching the pedals. Cause we don't wanna mess up sort of the zeroing moment where it, it takes its initial measurement. So we've done that, we turn the bike on and we can just start pedaling. There we go. Real smooth, natural feeling. And here's a moment where we're having to slow way down right into a hill. And so it's a perfect opportunity to use that trigger throttle. And it just helps us climb right up, no problem. You can really hear that motor working but it did just fine. For reference, I weigh about 140 pounds and I am 5'9 with a 31 and a half inch inseam. So I've got the seat raised a little bit for myself. So I've got the closer to full leg extension here. And again, if you're a little bit taller or you just like that the style of the high step frame, that one's 19 inches versus 17.5 here. It's just a little bit bigger, a longer reach and everything. but it feels very solid. Again, I would probably lower the tire pressure a little bit myself. Just 
doing the shifters. It's nice that it has an optical window so you can see what gear you're in. I often shift all the way down when I come to a stop so it's easier to start again. And notice I can use my thumb to shift, but I also have to use my pointer finger because the high gears are up here. And a lot of times I prefer if I can use my thumb for both because I, I dedicate these fingers to braking. It's a little bit of a trade-off there. And it's just because this is a Shimano Alivio part instead of Dior or higher. There we go. So again, the nice thing about a torque sensor is even if I'm in the highest level of assist, it's not gonna go crazy on me if I'm not pushing very hard. So right now I'm in assist level five, but I'm barely pushing and everything feels smooth and quiet. And then when I start to really go for it, Oh, very nice. Beautiful day. Nice place to ride. Sweet. Nice. Thanks for your help, Chris. So again, big thanks to Rides in Motion. They're just right up that way. If you come test ride some of their e-bikes, you get to check out this trail, Scottsdale, Arizona. That is the Surface 604 sunny day. I've got all the specs back at electricbikereview.com, as well as a comparison tool. So you could look at the big sky and some of the other cruisers and city bikes and make a decision. Uh, this review is done for free. My goal is just to help you guys sort through the different bikes, answer some questions and have fun. I love you, ride safe. We'll see you next time.